Fine, really? I'm still not sleepy though. It's uh, 30 minutes past uh, 2 a.m. Mm. Still good. DC's well, you keep me awake all the time. Like I, you you you, can't, you have that kind of a voice that uh, yeah. doesn't make me sleepy. Yeah. It makes Radiant's me like one of. Oh, we'll stop you right there. We'll stop yeah, you yeah, right I, there. I, Digital yeah, Chaos, exactly. Warlock Axe for you. And look, we're gonna get <laughs> we're gonna get another game of another Magnus and a Lycan. So a lot of repeats here. Well, uh, this time it might actually be um, an offlane mag, or maybe Five they just want to prove remaining. they can do it with the position four mag again with uh, Axe uh, and Warlock. Reserve but time. Uh, this time they have Lycan. Okay, Lycan with uh, Mag Empower looks scary on the paper. Also, Digital Chaos banned out uh, Troll Warlord. For those who didn't see uh, at the first day, uh, Infamous beat uh, DC 2-0 with uh, Troll Warlord two times. Yeah, and they learned their lesson. They got to respect the Ben Jazz Troll Warlord. Just as Infamous will respect Abed now by banning out that invoker and they'll also follow it up with a ban on the meepo too it's just very apparent that if abed gets a hold of either of those heroes it's it's just a serious freaking problem Would yeah you, you know how like you know uh, how like me for ladies first do you know how like an uh, counters axe uh, when he goes in uh, with a blink remaining. call and tries to dunk like and uses howl increased hp Reserve wastes time. uh dunk what do you say about that? I like that. I think that would be pretty clutch. Radiant <laughs> Just quickly pick. swell up a bit. It could be so a it could silence. Have potential. Silence or band out. That's that's an interesting ban. What does that say? It says that I could say a couple of things. Ten like they want to get remaining. something that like a storm mm -hmm. spirit, let's say, or maybe some sort of clutch defensive DC's hero that would get pick. shut down normally by global. And then yeah. look at this. Well, there is your Monkey King you wanted to see for past few days. Finally. Finally comes out here and now. Uh, you had said that maybe Ping could have been the reason why we weren't seeing it Ten as much, but uh, it really was feeling like teams just kind of almost forgot about him. But Five seconds Infamous will get him. Radiant Clockwork for DC. Well, Clockwork uh, providing vision game against uh, that Monkey King. Also, uh, Clockwork uh, really good uh, against Lycan. He can't uh, pass Cogs. Ten seconds. This, this is the pick I like, really. And uh, yeah. we'll be seeing a Bulba Five Clockwork that's remaining. not in the off lane. That's kind of weird, you know. Oh uh, well, it might be still uh, forever Clockwork or not. It's not gonna be. It's uh, an action off lane. My bad. So it's a position uh, for Clockwork. Yeah. And uh, yeah. unless I say misery every fucking moment like I normally do, it's definitely Bulba playing the clockwork. And, you know, we've always been treated That's to the amazing. great Bulba offlane clockwork, but DC's I'm anxious to see if he has any new pick. ideas for the hero in a position that's, you know, support. And how he's going to build up the farm and momentum. Well, it's pretty much the same hero, just uh, lacking uh, one item lacking levels but uh, he does the same thing Ten he does as uh, an offlane clock same goes for that mag we saw in the last game Five seconds uh, remaining. oh clock shadow fiend uh, yeah. combo yeah. killing the cogs get extra damage for mid try to dominate the lane what about uh, the last pick for dc you think it's gonna be a red hero <laughs> are they uh, from the same lore the warlock Ten is uh, the, the oh. axes too, right? Yeah, axe, axe and warlock are, are relatives in a way. But uh, so you'd have to get disruptor or something, I guess, if you want to keep that red party going. Carry disruptor just for the <laughs> lols. <laughs> no, they're, uh, I don't know. Something to match the pacing. The like a bit. Do they play like morphling very often? Oh, they ban out the tinker. DC's hmm. turn to pick. Their lineup doesn't read too much as far as if it's going to be like a high tempo or not, line, like kind of a lineup. Like push right away, peak at 30 minutes, or is this going to be like a a marathon of a game for Ten DC to work with? Remaining. Well, this looks like pretty normal Five game. Nothing special in terms of push for any team. 
nothing to take da uh, down towers time. fast besides Lycan and I mean you can empower whoever you can empower CM with level 10 talent to plus 60 damage uh, she pushes the tower so Mason's played a share of Weaver in the past Timber saw. Timber saw though is not something Radiance I see him play a whole pick. lot but uh, okay then so Timber saw doesn't really uh, doesn't really scream we're going to be going for a marathon kind of a game. This one says we're going to break a lot of action. It's unfortunately Lacoste not very red. I'm sorry. A little red, but <laughs> 10 yeah. seconds remaining. Sadly. Final uh, pickup potentially here to come Five up from Infamous. It remaining. is uh, obviously apparent that this is going to be an offlane Magnus as opposed to the previous game with Reserve the Monkey King time. and Crystal Maiden both coming out. So, now looking to isolate. Well, potentially they're offlane. I mean, could you mid lane mid Magnus against Shadow Fiend? It's a loss, I know, but if you want to go for something, you know, better, well, you let's can say always go. Lane. Yeah, you can go for mid Magnus if you want to lose the game. <laughs> I, <don't laughs> know, I, I mean, the only thing I would say is that they had like something off lane they'd love to get that would just make the game whole for them. But yeah, I would agree with you. Mag to the off lane, and then something to score up against the Shadow Fiend. Dirty, pick like a. I mean, you don't want to go against Shadow Fiend who has a. Extra damage from from clock cogs, especially on Magnus. You do well. You can go jungle, but that Shadow Fiend will just free farm. So they need something for the mid. I always like to call it for the dirty Viper pickers. They want to Viper down a, a Shadow Fiend and be able to prevent Axe from moving around a whole lot. But maybe Alina with Lina. Crystal Maiden Aura works well. Yeah, Lena. Lena's a good portal pick. Lena, Monkey King has been a common combo. Lena, Crystal Maiden, Sisters, of course, work nicely together. <coughs> Ursa Warrior. They're going to opt to go for the Ursa pickup here. Interesting. And oh. that is Sword going on in the Ursa. What is happening? It is going to be a mid lane Magnus. Unless they swap again, they are putting themselves in for a mid lane Magnus game and an off lane Ursa? What? 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 No, this is like a, a lot of mindfuck, actually. <laughs> uh, this is uh, what we call mindfuck? Mm. Yeah, well, they might think they could have placed Timberso mid and that's why Ursa was picked or what they can do is... Uh, Put uh, maybe even Lycan on mid, have a Mag on bottom lane solo, and have like a triple lane with Crystal Maiden, Monkey King, Ten and Ursa. Remaining. That a, sounds pretty great. much everything. Everything is pretty much open for uh, Infamous. Remaining. They can lane it. But the best way, if Shadowfiend is mid with extra damage, Ursa can't really fight into that. So it would be better for Magnus and have an offlane. I mean, safe lane Ursa, good against Axe, good against Timberso. So I think it's going to be a safe lane Ursa, actually, and Mag on mid. Or might be a Lycan on mid against Shadowfin. It's going to be a tough matchup for whomever because, as you mentioned, I'm gonna stop. they're going to be yeah. dealing with the clockwork. I know, it's it's you're looking at Infamous's lineup, and it's pretty unorthodox. And and what kind of laning setup they're going to be going for here. I, th but. I think I've said every possible options so <laughs> did you say monkey king mid i don't think so so uh, every possible good option sorry okay there you go uh our towers of course zero to zero a, a screen of time that is not really necessary let's get underway it's game number two digital chaos already with the game one advantage one more win to secure a spot Prepare into the playoffs and to face team np in the first round Infamous hoping to get a win here to take it to a three-game stretch and join SG Esports in representing South America in the next round. So if they, what they want to do is place Ursa on safe lane uh, because of the axe. Uh, I mean, Ursa against any melee hero is good. Have a tri lane on top and the mag on mid, what it seems to be. Mag um, seems like he wants to go for bottle first item. This is the... I didn't see this for quite, quite long. This kind of a build. <laughs> Usually normal... Anyone who's playing mid doesn't want to rush to bottle because of the shrines. It happened from the 7.0 patch. Yeah. 
have a shrine, so you don't need to rush it. You either go for PMS or boost of speed, whatever you you need. And they are going to be able to secure. They did, they actually didn't get three cogs on that last one. It looks like as they bumped the shrine for the final push out. Abed confidently going to the high ground here, but may not be suspecting a tag team. Oh, hey, cool, uh, cool extra damage you gave yourself there, bro. Mind if we just uh, beat your ass? <laughs> Oh, he has seven so, And they take his bounty rune. Okay, Infamous, I see you. I see you. I like that. Oh, so he has to buy a, a TP for himself. Oh, they they countered this so well. Wow, good heads up on that one. And uh, they're going to have Mr. Sonico Jr. I believe this is Matthew. I'm not too sure. Uh, currently the zoner for the mid lane. Abed has all that sweet extra damage, but he's not going to be able to get anything going. And for the first wave, it feels like here, and allows Tomato to have a pretty good head start. Should still be a you know, tough time the second the Monkey King leaves, but that's a good lead-in for Infamous to deal with a laning situation that on paper was going to be incredibly difficult. Yeah, this Grievel needs to help the top lane. Here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> There he goes, boom, suddenly shows up and is able to smack down Dubu a bit. Dubu will be forced to chew his way through the tree path and make it closer to the safety of his tower, but already some heavy roam coming out from the Monkey King, proving to be a bit of a headache. And uh, over here on the bottom side, we're going to see Forev on a reprieve performance of his axe. For now, yeah, feeling like a pretty strong one-on-one -on -one against the Ursa while he has the benefit of Bulba to pull the creep wave back and under the safety of his tower if you'd like. Pretty common lane on bottom, X and Clockwork. What? <laughs> it's got some uh, fun little synergy bits. Trap them both within the cogs. Maybe get some free extra spins in there. It's uh, definitely different, but I'm sure the Ursa's not liking the lane. Not one bit. Comes in a bit. We'll try to dance with Forev as much as possible. Now, uh, here comes Crystal Maiden, though. She has no mana, unfortunately, for the Frostbite, so she can't follow up with any heavy-handed action. But Sword is making moves in. He's very distracted from just moving in any sort of CS game. He's constantly having to deal with DC. Jackpot. Abed leading in nice and early at uh, 12 and 16 CS, of course. Not yours. 16 being the heavy amount of cogs he's been able to take down, but hey, Magnus is at 11, not really falling too far off at this point. Still holding on to the small head start they were given. Yeah, top lane, uh, Monkey King with Howl and with Boots of Speed and Orb of Venom because he got nice. that extra gold from the first blood. He didn't get it, but got some from get the assist. Can really beat up people really hard. Do you think that it's his, in his best interest to kind of hang around the top lane more often? Uh, he already did what he needed to do in the mid lane, and he's just going to trade between the top and the jungle, possibly? Uh, yeah, well, he can't move the bottom right now. Infamous uh, is doing a good job in the laning stage. Mid matchup, um, Shadowfin will continue to dominate that lane right now because uh, Mag... Uh, What's Mag bringing? It's just a Quelling Blade. He doesn't even want to have a stout shield. Just boots of speed. I guess if uh, Monkey King wants to show on mid, they can try to get a kill on Shadowfin, but uh, Monkey King is just stand sitting on top. Yeah, he's just kind of hanging here. Hasn't really shown himself yet. And yeah, this is where we're seeing the Shadowfin matchup begin to really get away from the Magnus a bit. But he'll be able to move off to the side and uh, work his way through the nearby jungle. Has that Quelling Blade still in a shared tango to kind of help with the extra bit of regen. And Monkey King is looking to flirt over near Dubu and snipe the bounty rune for himself. This will come in handy. And he will do so. You shall not. Just getting some free share of XP before he can make any sort of impact in the game. Kind of said yeah, the same for Bulba. Yeah, he is level 2 right now and uh, he can try to make a move. On bottom, if he can get hands on uh, Crystal Maiden, that would be perfect. Yeah, she's been doing pretty good keeping herself nice and deep. Even avoiding uh, getting spotted out by that planted ward by DC. 
Haven't been able to talk too much about Mason here. We don't get to see Mason a whole lot on this timber side. He's had Dubu as his babysitter and has been working pretty freely through the lane at 22 and 5 CS at the moment. Ooh, bottom lane. Battery Salt all the way out. They're going to be bumping the bear forward, though. Couldn't quite get the catch with the cogs. And the bear just might slip away from what could have been DC's first kill. Super close. Yeah, they're super low. Oh, look oh. at this! Bulba comes in from behind and can't quite connect again with the Cogs. Good backstep there. And a rotation will come in to the sky as they see the Monkey King jump up through the trees. Bulba's still here dancing with him a bit, and so's Dubu. Oh, he actually gets a connection with the Fatal Bonds, but they're still dancing with the Monkey King here. Looks Radiant's like no kill will be had, but uh, they were able to kind of force out the rotation and, and force back and out of the lane the Ursa. <laughs> Monkey King needed to TP there to help uh, Ursa out uh, and Crystal Maiden, they were both so low. Oh, this uh, bottom lane for Rev again, dominating the lane with that axe. Radiance bottom tower is under Kind of like the same point we saw in the previous game too. It's well, This time he's going to be rushing forward for a vanguard. Uh, as opposed to going straight for the blink, where in the previous Radiance game he had the benefit, of course, of that invoker to help set up with sun strikes. This time he's happy to be just a bit more durable Gold and get me. the extra life. Yeah, it's uh, he's playing against the Ursa and the Lycan, so good item. Can upgrade it later on on top lane. Yeah, pressure onto Mason as the Monkey King springs into action from the trees. The timber chain will come out, and no action will follow. Mason will make it away. Just a uh, Touch of trouble, but nothing too serious coming out. Not much opening for both teams. Uh, one kill so far. Uh, right now, with Ursa having face boots, uh, well, X can't really initiate on him on the bottom lane, and we'll get to the Vanguard pretty soon. So that that X comes. Pretty much oh, unkillable. they have spotted Abed, but he quickly just assaults and takes out the Crystal Maiden. And now with the one-on-one, -on -one, the Monkey King, though, is the man fighter. And uh, yeah, Jingu Mastery <laughs> is, even when you're a couple levels down, going to give you the better fight. It's a worthy trade at that point. Balance in all things. Mm -hmm. My finest creation. Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm not sure why Monkey King hits so fast. This will come uh, in handy. Considering his uh, agility, what is it, 25, and attack speed 138. It's pretty fast for level 4 hero, though. And here we only see him once in the qualifier so far. Hmm? Yeah. He heads all the way back to base. We could be seeing more from him in the future. But the uh, pressure continues to mount here. Uh, DC in the bottom lane, swarming around the Ursa a bit. He is looking to go right for that Blink Dagger next. And looks like the Monkey King is going to be heading over to join his side. Also looking to go between uh, his own Blink Dagger and Blade Mail. He's back at Ferev. Already with that Vanguard now done. He's got 400 gold, some good money. Dude by his side. And with the Fatal Bonds, but maybe looking for a setup onto Dubu here. Rotations are coming from the rest of Infamous. Ferev, though, makes the call. Brings in the Monkey King, and now Ursa's trying to just unload his swipes onto the axe, but that is not always the best idea. That will be a gank avoided. Yeah, there was no mana on axe to dunk that uh, Monkey King. Uh, meanwhile, top lane, this uh, Timber Saw is really hard to take down. Mm -hmm. With uh, level 4 reactive armor against Ursa, Lycan, Jingo Mastery. They will need a lot to take him down. Nice couple of stacks here too for Ferev. His snowball potential in the previous game was a good deciding factor for DC and we could be just seeing that yet again here in game two. As he bulks up his farm even further and we'll head right back bottom to get the completion of his Blink Dagger. Uh, we do have Mag with RP ready to go here through the mid lane as he fends off a bit of the pressure. But as you mentioned before, the kill opportunities here for pretty much both teams have been very few and far between in this game. Even now, bottom lane for Rev is a pretty hard commitment to make. They'll move in with the stun, but I imagine this chase... Phase boots ready. Yeah, the phase boots actually allows him to just rush on forward, and with no extra defensive rotations or heals, that for Rev is going to be going. 
And that is good. That will help uh, Infamous delay and prolong his Blink Dagger a little bit. Oh, uh, Lycan and uh, Magnus are trying to kill that stack. That's three stacks, or two stacks, actually. Radiance top tower Looks like that will help attack. finish the hand of Midas here for Ben Jazz. Uh, he's got to be careful, though. He's eating a lot of damage. I heard a rocket go off. Excellent. I would have just been giggling away if that was to connect on Ben Jazz <laughs> and finish him off. Generation. But it looks like he'll have to head all the way back is under attack. as it is for now. So DC still kind of happy to do their own thing. We now have a level 6 Dubu, so Warlock with the Rock. The bounty which my matriarch will prize. Yeah, th these Warlocks pretty much end up uh, with brown boots at minute 10, 15. Okay. Has Dubu no. okay, now the rock does go down. It makes good connection on for three. The Requiem also going to get unleashed. Is under Not very significant damage between the two ultis, I got to say. So DC, tower is under probably going to be looking to Dyer's walk off a bit. But Push here up. comes Bulba coming in with his own level six. He's got the hook shot and finds connection on to the Monkey King. Blast him forward. The dunk will be there. A little nice alley-oop play Radiant's between the two. Tower. Under and DC will fend off Infamous and be able to step back for the remainder of this Tier 1 tower. Timerso yeah. managed to kill the tower on fallen. the top, meanwhile. Looks really good for uh, DC, uh, even though uh, Lycan is clearing a lot of stacks. This is the second stack. Yeah, yeah. Lycan's... Buffing his farm tremendously, but you know, you're going down the road of getting a Midas, playing that greedier kind of a game, and it's going to take that little bit of extra time to, you know, hit his true power peak. I imagine the Ursa is going to be looking to try to mix things up before him once he gets that Blink Dagger online, which continues to be delayed a little bit. I just feel like DC are going to be in much better, stronger fighting shape before Infamous are feeling confident in themselves at all. I could be thinking too hard about it, but I'm baking a lot on how much farm Forev has been getting for himself. Yeah, well, uh, it's gonna Go. depend uh, in the next few minutes uh, who initiates better. Uh, X uh, has enough gold for Blink Dagger, so they will try to go for some kind of uh, smoke play. And uh, Ursa, kind of far away for, from his Blink Dagger. Mag, 300 gold, so we'll see who initiates better. Boba. Snagging up the bounty rune. Right, looked like he was heading his way possibly through the bottom. They plant down the ward. But no hook shot. They're gonna go there. on top. Yeah. Forev moves in with that new blink dagger. Gets up a nice call. And can he get the dunk? Yes, he can. The shapeshift was there, but unfortunately, he will not be able to run his way out. Forev with another back to back game of a good blink dagger debut. Infamous are going to have to squabble a bit. This is like when you start imploring that buddy-buddy system. You don't want to be caught out in a lane at risk of Axe jumping you. And you're going to have to really consider your wardage. Oh my god, from the high ground here, DC could get the approach onto Infamous in this mid lane if they're not careful. Looks like they saw the Monkey King movement. Are they going to move in for Mason? They're going to go for the skewer back, and that's when Forever makes his move. The trap has been sprung. Monkey King trying to help out himself with getting that Monkey King all. A follow-up RP is pretty damn good. And suddenly it's infamous with their own counter fight. Looking to rush down Mason here. He can't find the connection to the timber chain. Looking to move. It's going to be up and unleashing the Requiem and turning it right back on its ass. Suddenly, as fast as the Urso looks to run in, he has to 180 himself right back out. Radiance Middle Tower. Well, is under Infamous attack. showing uh, that with a good RP they can fight it. It was just uh, Lycan hitting uh, these three people and almost took all three of them down. So if they combine attack. it well with uh, Ursa Blink Dagger and Power, it could be really deadly for DC. DC Radiance take a tier 1-2 on fallen. top of it, and they move themselves into nearly a 5k net worth advantage at this point. Take a moment to hit the showers, of course, and uh, restore up, Ooh. but, you know, new options for moving into the Roche or pressuring tier 2s are before them. It's on Infamous here to try to get some momentum for themselves back in this game, but it ain't coming easy. Monkey King has a while before he's going to get that Shadow Blade done. Looks like Ursa has been 
able to finally finish out that blink dagger. Is he going to find an easy set of kills with this at all? Or is this feeling just a, a bit too late for now? Well, he can get a kill on Warlock, and that's uh, pretty much it. Clockwork, if uh, he's not careful enough, if he has an Empower on. Okay, they're smoked. They're trying to make a move on top. RP is going to be ready in 20. Blink Dagger on Ursa. Monkey King already here, scouting ahead of time. Mason, though, under this very full Tier 1. Rotations could be made Radiance from DC. The second action attack. breaks out, so Infamous have to get the job done fast. They already look to make their move in. The first rotation's coming, but they are able to bring Mason down. Foreb shows up to play, but he's still surrounded by a lot of Infamous members. This is going to be one by one for DC. It does look like it. Good move for Infamous. Very nice rotation. They even took down charges from Bloodstone on Timbersaw. When you make a when you make a bloodstone, you get the blink on axe. You want to fight as much as you can, but uh, now the blink daggers are up on infamous, and they're ready to fight. No rock yet, though. Not all is lost for DC. It looks like Abed was able to claim a tier two in the bottom lane, so they get a little bit of something for themselves. But uh, after infamous do claim that tier one, they take the opportunity to move on forward and get a couple of uh, wards down here. That one had already been there, but and that one too. All right, well. Supporting some good defensive vision. Actually, both teams also, have some nice offensive vision, really. Anyways, go on. Uh, yeah, uh, good vision from DC. Uh, pretty much they see everything, but they don't see smoke. <laughs> uh, I love the build on Crystal Maiden with uh, level 2 aura and uh, just went 3 in Frostbite, just keeping those people as long as they can, especially for right clickers like Lycan, yeah. Ursa. Yeah. Lots of kiting capability. Uh, need a bit of a restart here for Forev, but we're going to get back into action right now, it looks like. As uh, DC just take a, a little bit of this a loss there. We come off on the yeah. back of a gank approach from Infamous, able to take down both Mason and Forev in that top lane, plus score a tier one tower for themselves. Seeing the fighting items begin to come together here for Benjaz on his Lycan as he has his Echo Saber complete and he's going to be looking to push forward to the BKB next. Yeah, this is the build I like more. Uh, we saw Vlad's last game. Pretty costly item. What, what is it? Let me just check. 2.4k and for 2.4k we'll add a little bit extra and get Echo Saber. This one to be able to really get a hold of and, and chomp through, whether it be the towers or maybe some pesky little warlock support before he can get the rock down. Yes. Yeah, Infamous uh, needs to Double try to get damage. one more smoke and uh, try to get probably a kill or two and then just uh, finish Roche. We have a good Roche lineup. Yeah, Roche is there. The lineup's good to do it. Space to get it done though is not there at the moment. As DC are actually drawing things out to continue the pressure on forward here with Rock up and ready to go. Uh, they feel like it's their time to still be able to take the better fights. So mid lane, they approach. Infamous for now are kind of hightailing their way down through the bottom, which is currently going over to the watchful eye of DC. Yeah, uh, one more thing about that Echo Saber build on Lycan. Uh... I prefer to go for Echo Saber build, especially when you have M power. It's not just a double hit, it's a double cleave hit. Mm -hmm. Also, Monkey King is getting a lot of farm with that M power as well. So, Basher is up in the next 20 seconds. Uh, and this is gonna be big, especially if there is uh, two, three men RP. Monkey King is also working his way and getting super tower. close to that Basher. Attack. That turns his ult into like a mini RNG Ravage. It's quite ridiculous. Okay, here comes the move from DC. They pop the smoke at the beginning. They head their way up through the river. Infamous. Kind of out the back door already. Not looking to get caught up in too much trouble. Dyer's bottom tower this is some is serious attack. timing on that basher. 18 minute basher face boots. Yeah. Ooh, whoa. 
Miss on the hook from Bulba. And they look to turn it around. They'll catch him with the stun. Forev steps in to help, gets off the call. The Rock will be there right on top. And then Benjaz looks to go in and chop his way to go for the finish. And they're going to be able to get the Crystal Maiden down in exchange for Forev. Over on the other side, Abed gets hit. Locked with the stun. And they'll sing back, holding their high ground position. It's a minor trade. Yeah, these cogs uh, didn't let Mag to RP there. We were talking about cogs against uh, heroes like Ursa and uh, Lycan. It's gonna be a problem for them to to kill it and uh, have a good positioning in team fight. Ooh, he accidentally skewered his own Monkey King to the ground, but he's trying to get to the <laughs> side and go for an RP setup, but he ends up RPing right on top of the head and gets the finish on the Warlock. Warlock had already committed his rock, but they get the finish nonetheless. And now they go in. Bulba's gonna be going down too. Abed looking to wait back and behind. Dishes out a couple of raises. Mason stepping in, but my god, look how infamous are able to use those trees to hide in and out. They reapproach once again, and Benjaz will secure the double kill. Looking to make it a triple as they get the finish onto Mason. Mason gets hit back, but the quick deny will be there. Wow, this infamous lineup looking uh, really strong at the moment. Lycan finishes his BKB. He can tank so, mu so much as well. What? 2.6k HP. And again, that Frostbite level 4 from Crystal Maiden. The way they were just manipulating the terrain was just something uh, else too. And I actually don't even know if that was like the best way for them to start things out. Catching the Warlock on the side is, is great. The singular RP though made it very tough. They were hoping to maybe get, if that Warlock wasn't there, he would have been able to make a perfect T-bone initiation right on top of DC. Boom, there he but goes. given the situation, they're still able to kind of make their move in and take the better fight. Now infamous find Mason. Go right for a freezing field frostbite combo. The jumping comes out from the Monkey King to go for the stun lockdown, but they can't quite get the finish. But that's when Benjaz comes into play, and the chase is on. Can he make his way to the shrine? They skewer him back, and they deny him altogether. Bulba tries to come in to help out, but the damage had already been done two times straight. Mason will fall down to four charges already on his Bloodstone. This is not looking good for Timber, so at all. I mean, there's a crest on him, but uh, is there anything uh, Bloodthorn or MKB that should come? Not really. Probably not. Well, not not yet. I mean, Shadowfin has a butterfly queued up, so they will need it eventually if the game drags to that point. Yeah. Okay, heads up move from DC now. Looking to take away the Roche. It's being pinged out from Infamous. I don't know if they can do it fast enough. They're trying, but it looks like they all already understand that this is not going to be easy. are already stepping a bit out of position here. Taking a Roche pit fight against Monkey King and... Uh, Mag is uh, not the best idea. Mag does have that RP, as you can see. He uses it right in front of the front gate of that Roche pit. The follow-up rock is going to be there from Dubu, though. And uh, they're looking to grind their way through Forev. They'll be able to bring him down. A jump in from Ursa to help get the finish and the takedown of Bulba. The chase is on for Monkey King, and DC will get that, making it at least a two-for-one trade. Still weak, though. They have to step back and hit the shrine. Well, well, now it's time for them to go Roche if they want uh, DC. They have Shadowfin and Dalti. Can well, they go have already stepped in. They're going to be taking it for themselves. Benjaz looks to go in for the shapeshift, and he might just burst his way through it. Now Abed's going to be stepping in. Can they go for the finish? Abed gets the last hit. No, he takes the Aegis for himself, and DC are going to be holding on to it now. He ditches out the Requiem just before he loses the extra life. Paparazzi Jr. trying to make it away. Blinks out, and same for Sword. DC with a good reapproach, just walk themselves in and take what's rightfully theirs. I bet that Aegis steal, that was really, really good. It cost them just a Crystal Maiden. It could have been different. There, there was like three heroes uh, with 200 HP with just a double raise. He could have cleared them all. Radiance but middle the, tower sadly, he died. Now it's time to go in for a tier two. It's still kind of fighting time for him. I mean, well, 30 seconds at least before the RP would be back up. 
It looks like they're going to be satisfied with that, and they will get back uh, to their side of the map for now. Forever, Forever's peaking has kind of fallen off a bit for some of these fights. He steps in as a follow-up to kind of, you know, get the lockdown there, but uh, quickly they'll swarm onto him, and he'll get taken out of the fight so fast. I don't know if that's anything that he can even change himself. It just feels like uh, when Infamous are kind of on the money in some of these fights, they just dish out plenty of damage to make them look Old like paper. And sweet. Well, Excellent. it's pretty even game uh, if uh, they use their spells correctly, even in favor of, in, uh, favor of Infamous. But uh, this Clockwork also doing a good job uh, controlling that Ursa. He, he, we saw that in SG game, uh, he goes in on Ursa and uh, forces uh, the ulti from him because he has a blade mail on and then just runs away. Ursa doesn't have a basher yet, so he can just run away. We might be seeing Infamous push out this mid lane a bit and then go for a smoke play if they wanted to approach DC coming in from the north. That seems to be the case. After the mid lane's push, they pop their smoke. A rocket was shot there. Could end up being a bit fishy when they suddenly see that no one's Radiant's around. Top tower is under and I think that that is the case. DC, Radiant's step away. Top tower has fallen. And uh, we'll walk away with just the tower takedown. Jackpot. And they're happy with it. Now the Shadow Blade is finished on the Monkey King. That might uh, change the fight. There was a... I mean, he goes in with that Monkey King, but uh, the rock drops and the, if Fatal Bonds are connected with the big Shadow Fiend ulti, he can't really stand in uh, his own ulti. To the farm we go. This, this Monkey King is really, really farm. Shadow Blade off top of that. Basher already. He's gonna go for what is that? Solar Crest himself? Build up. Yeah. Dang. And then uh, what looks like a, a BKB after that. And, well, uh, it's good that yeah, it's good that Monkey King has uh, that much of a farm, uh, but uh, he is stealing a lot of farm from Earth. I mean, that's all of that farm Ooh, could deep could jump in Ursus. from Forev towards the bottom lane. It's the quick assassination takeout of the Monkey King. Precise. Just jump, blade mail. <laughs> Monkey King does hit hard, but he can also uh, not take too many hard shots like that. Both teams uh, have a gem right now. Or do they? That there was two gems. Uh, I don't see a gem on anybody at the moment. There's gem on. There's gem on axe. Oh, yep, you're right. One gem right there. I. I think I saw the second gem as well, or they stole it from them. Well, gem yeah, axe is his, so that's hard to say. Yeah, it's 3 a.m. here, so <laughs> I understand, John. I hear you. Here, uh, infamous though, hanging towards the high ground in hopes that maybe someone from the DC side will make a casual approach down through this mid lane. Nothing though. We'll head back up through the other side. Uh-oh, I say that, but uh, as they spot out Forev going for a D ward, they quickly TP towards that shrine and look to punish him for it, and they'll get it. Quick reaction speed coming out from Infamous. Yeah, there's the gem. And a prize pick off at that, too. So just as fast as they get the gem on side of DC, it's going to be taken the other way. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Well, with the double uh, four staff from uh, one on mag, one on crystal metal soon to be finished, uh, they can kite around that clockwork. And now with Ags on Ursa, he can really commit to killing and that clock off. with it. Shadow Fiend with Butterfly and Solar Crest uh, on uh, Timber. So they, they, they need a Blood Thorn or an MKB on here. Okay, Lycan already has Demon Edge. But uh, also, Ursa will have to go for one. Yeah, he has it queued up, so. Dang. Yeah, they are going to have answers for DC very soon. And uh, I don't know if DC are going to be itemizing in the same way here. Long rocket, but uh, too late to be able to get the catch on any sort of Monkey King there. And DC's uh, fighting momentum certainly has been forced to pump the brakes Dyer's quite a bit. Tower is under attack. And uh, now we're going to be seeing uh, 
very small infamous squad begin to pressure DC and force them to kind of be pulled around the map a bit as now they lead in towards a tier two in the top lane and they're gonna be happy to manipulate things as much as possible until maybe the next Roshi even comes out but smoke comes out from DC and they're attack. looking to change things up and take the momentum of the game right back oh and maiden is in with that okay oh, that's gonna pop and you're right they have no detection on hand they're not gonna be able to spot her and quickly they can head out the other direction is anyone gonna get caught no all that intel being provided from the Crystal Maiden helps them avoid the gank altogether. That's a nice movement from CM. Very fortunate for her smoke. that they didn't have detection. Jeez. Saving the team. Look at Monkey King. He's uh, in the mode, I don't care about the game. <laughs> I'm the carry now. Farming uh, his way through the Ancients and all the jungle. Yeah, Solar Crest, the Gem, Shadow Blade, Basher. Wants to have a BKB as well. Someone on that team's gonna suffer <laughs> from him taking all that farm. It's looking like the Ursa right now. Like it's taking all the. Oh, no, they're all jungle farming, so. I guess they'll all just have to take a much less share. Ursa recently finishing out his Agnums. I mean, if they were hoping for him to get the finish on the MKB, he's gonna need that timing, but. Infamous are looking for a possible fight. Now they smoke up and sweet. are flirting around this Roche pit. Oh, they took the. They took the arcane rune, and I think DC spotted that. Did they have a vision over the rune? They pinged it the second the rune was picked up. Oh, how did I see it? Dyer's middle tower how did oh, the attack. wolf bypass the tower? Dyer's okay. middle tower has fallen. They take to the trees right there, but it looks like DC are not going to be hanging out anybody too far from home and outside their leash. As they just play this one a bit slower in hopes of avoiding the feisty infamous squad. They pull off a bit, but this game is still super close. A difference of only 500 or so net worth in this. Yeah, Lycan has his uh, MKB in 30 gold. So that's when they want to fight. Roche is up, what, uh, two minutes? Kind of late Roche respawn. Been unfortunate for DC at the moment. They would love to be able to maybe consider moving in there for it, but timing will not be on their side. And after Infamous kind of pressure out this mid lane, they could go back on the prowl once again. They're just trying to keep each lane in order as much as possible. And we have recovery late game items trying to come together here for DC. We see Dubu trying to go for the Midas himself. A Yules trying to get together here for Forev. Gem and some wards for Bulba as he's pretty much his clockwork peak at the moment between a four staff and a blade mill. Yeah, and another gem. Uh, Forev uh, wants to get that. Uh, uh, what's it called? Yule scepter. Uh, Yule scepter. Yeah, uh, it's good, really good against uh, Ursa. Just to throw him in the air because Ursa has no BKB yet, or just in general. If uh, Lycan goes in, who also doesn't have a BKB ready. Smoke, it looks like here for DC. They're going to make sure the area is safe, and then they decide to pop it. They had just shown themselves towards the top lane, and they're hoping that that will give them a little bit of leverage on catching out some infamous members. <laughs> Maybe first they will scout out the Roche Pit. Not up yet. They have the wardage there on the high ground. And they make their approach up and through the infamous ancient camp. But infamous, look at this positioning. They are hiding way far back, seeing that no DC members are in the area. They had this ward up on this high ground area, but I don't think that saw the smoke. So just the game sense here. Look at this. They're now going to be the team coming up from the other side. Mason's going to be the first one to see the action breaking out. They'll hit him with a frostbite and a lot of right clicks. Monkey goes to the trees, up and over the other side. The rock's going to get dropped on top. Huge three-man RP is going to make connection. And they skew it right back into the action. Lycan begins to chop them all apart as they fall. Two going to be going down, but two the other side is up. It helps shred them apart. The Requiem to fly out. And it looks like they can't find the Lycan in a way to get back into the fight at the moment as they quickly disperse. Double buyback from uh, Infamous uh, Clockwork doing such a good job. Look at that little space, the stairs, the high ground. Uh, he, he blocked the three of them on the other side. They couldn't pass through that. 
Meanwhile, Monkey King kind of a too aggressive jump. Uh, X good call, and they just uh, insta kill them. Yeah, Infamous uh, obviously not taking the better positioning for that one. Obviously not expecting DC uh, to be in that kind of area. Also, uh, Infamous smoked, and uh, when you smoke, you don't want to climb the high ground. You want to go around, try to attack from the high ground. That's uh, that's the thing. I mean, they could have wrapped around, like, uh, go through the river on the Roche pit on that high ground and go from there. I mean, Ursa lost half of its uh, HP climbing the, that high ground. Yeah. Plus, they had no vision, and... Uh, DC, look at the ward on the high ground they had. Yeah, they clearly saw him hop right up and over, and they were just in the much better positioning. It was a great RP, too. Magnus was like, you know what? I'll just jump it. And he just jumped over through the high ground and, and did manage to catch a couple. But, you know, you're scaring back into an Ursa who's already gotten his ass beat quite a bit. The Lycan was having a hard time fighting his way through the terrain to get into, like, the meat of the fight. And it became a very awkward situation for Infamous real fast. But after all disconnecting from the game, it looks like they've been in. They're back in now. And uh, DC quickly take their approach into the Roche. And it looks like they'll be, able, they'll be able to get it without trouble at all. Yeah, they can't contest it. Mag is uh, gone. Roshan has fallen to the dice. Goes down, and DC take this game right back claim about a 2k net worth lead at the moment but this will help them secure those next big pickups you saw like in there with the mkb grab for infamous but what can abed go for now is i thought he was stepping off for the satanic there a bit but it looks like he's going to change it up and go for an ac uh yeah i was just checking the items uh yeah that's gonna be ac to boost his team with uh, extra armor and himself because of that evasion, Lycan has an MKB, so he needs uh, more armor, though. Even though he's sitting on 21 armor right now, plus Sagus. We'll have to move uh, more with Mask into his backpack. Radiance top tower is under attack. Should be a good grab for him. What about Mason over here? Shiva's now done. Thanks to that recent tussle, he's been able to get a couple more charges, it looks like back onto his Bloodstone, the mighty Solar Crest, but he's sporting about 3.6k gold. Yeah. E-Blade might not be a bad idea here. E -blade There's no off. purge. Yeah. Stops all the heavy physical burst. Of course, coming out from the new Tricor that Infamous are flexing. And you're right, without a Diffusal Blade, they don't have much of a way to stop it. Ooh, Crystal Maiden! Her TP gets denied. Nice little Yules there. It's hard to watch! Melted. Yeah. Bulba already on to the next target. Pinged out the mid lane. Gets the hook shot. Here comes the boots of travel setup. Fred's going to be there with the follow up call. High ground is going to be the Magnus. He's waiting to see if he can get an approach. They force out the shape shift and he quickly retreats. And now, what do they have? 36 seconds left on the. Shape shift, uh, Aegis is uh, done, AC is done. Uh, they want to push right now. Let's see if they can do it. To the high ground, DC goes, and Abed begins to siege away on that tier three. He holds the Aegis and the extra life, and he does a lot of work. They have to hit him with something, and they do. Monkey King leads in with the stun. The bear comes in and scratches him a little bit. Nothing too threatening, though. Yeah, there there's it is. Solar Crest, Shadow Fane, 50 armor. The upheaval. With evasion. They have to fight their melee into the upheaval, which is very unfortunate. This is a tough defense for Infamous. Having to battle into it. Look at this Ursa. You can see the kiting begin already. One racks down. And really no no trouble for it. He needs that MKB on Ursa. What he can do if they feel uh, like they're gonna fight right now, sell Midas, get that uh, extra thousand gold, and... Uh, just buy full MKB, or he can just wait. They could uh, tell the Monkey King to stop farming so much, too. Or or bit. that one, yeah. I mean, Monkey King get an MKB for him. He's going, of course, for that Black King bar, his own KB. 
He's a monkey. He doesn't need a monkey king bar. He needs a black king bar. Black king bar. What if Monkey King buys a MKB? The game crashes. <laughs> He's not a Sven. <laughs> Infamous, it is a steeper hill to climb than it has ever been in this game now, it feels. Uh, with a, suddenly a 10k net worth advantage granted to DC after a successful fight, Roche, and now bottom lane invasion. It's a matter of just kind of stringing together another potential skirmish and this one could be fast over. Infamous trying to bulk up all the savings they can to get these critical items so that they can even hold a good fight, but that means they risk giving away that buyback. Hence why maybe the extra pressure is already coming from DC. Bounty. Yeah, Bulbasaur even buys the Vlads to give even more armor. Just a casual uh, plate mail on Timbersaw for some more extra armor on top of Ags. Here's Abed, Mantaing, illusioning, moving up, sieging away from the low ground. This tier three is gone. Radiance top and now it's onto the racks. There's the move in. It's a miss of a skewer. Stuns out for Monkey King. And now they can go to a finish on the racks. Infamous. This is their tournament life on the line right now. Radiance they got to be able to do something about it or they risk getting eliminated from the Summit 7. DC Radiance feeling strong about their move into the playoffs here if they can get the win and they'll walk away from the top lane with the rack set down. Three racks is already taken within the past few minutes and away from Infamous where they feel like they can't even commit any sort of team fight. What are they hoping for DC to do that they can actually initiate on them? Yeah, uh, they were probably waiting for Aegis to run out. Aegis is gone now, but the Shadow Fiend, the Satanic, Kind of hard to take down with all that armor. They have two MKBs finished right now. Yes. And um, they should try to make a move. I mean, if they're just going to stick uh, in the base, uh, they're going to lose the game eventually. Sheriffin has such a big range. If they feel threatened, uh, Clock will just go in. They will drop the rock and just save him. They also have uh, two four staffs. DC not actually stepping away too far. Probably just making sure Infamous can't feel comfortable at all walking outside their base and finding all that extra farm. I mean, imagine a restricted Infamous team. I mean, who's going to take the farm at that point? I don't think you give it to the Monkey King. Monkey King, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just him it's out there right now. It's a no-brainer. He's out there. Well, with uh, good ult is... Uh... Monkey King and good RP, they can win a fight, there's no doubt about it, but uh, they didn't manage to do it for the past, what, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, it, they have been patient. I mean, I don't know how long you can tell a team, or say a team is just being extra Radiant patient. I mean, that's two high ground pushes from DC, and uh, there's been no handy. window of opportunity for Infamous to lay down the Monkey King all or the RP. I mean, I don't know how long you want to wait before it's like, well, screw it. We got to do something. And you just throw it out there, but you can't afford to take another push like that. It, it really sucks playing uh, from the position where Infamous is right now. The map is pretty close for them. Uh, DC has a good vision. They don't have any board on the map. Yeah, the vision's ridiculous. Because of the gem. And uh, you're losing one 1-0 and you rely so much on mag ulti, so you can uh, make a mistake really easily. We'll see if he can he pull can... off the clutch or not. Okay. The King Var is finished on uh, Boom, King. Man. So we have three MKBs done, but that means no buyback for your Monkey King. So, uh, he's figuring no. that... No, it's a black king, Sharp not monkey. Oh, I'm sorry, it's, black king, yeah. It's a his king bar, but it's... The king bar on the monkey, monkey is Monkey done. black king yeah. bar. The king bar, which is black, is done on the monkey. I, I get you. I get you. He will not have the buyback, though. So he's hoping that he will get everything he needs within that one BKB, that one big monkey ult. I'll have to see if they're going to be able to get that opportunity or not. Maybe DC to the bottom lane to finish out that... Uh, Extra little racks right there. Jackpot. That's still standing. Ooh. They're playing things patient. They know that once Abed stepped away and was able to pick up that Satanic, he also handed away all of his gold. So if you wanted to have a buyback, you'd have to farm it up. 
He's actually already queuing oh, up a, got the a Scotty, but yeah, it looks like they got a hold of Mason in the bottom lane. I, I missed that one, but it looks like a shapeshift Benjaz was able to run in and help chomp him down. Not really, Benjaz didn't do anything. It was oh. Chris Maiden and the Monkey King just dealing so much damage. Without a Monkey Plus King Ursa. or anything. That was just, just a boundless strike and few bashes. Do it Dang. With flair. Roche is up in, uh, what, one minute? Infamous already heading that direction, though, to scout things out. Probably will look to lead things in with the high ground vision so that they can keep tabs on what DC are thinking about doing here. And it's off! So what does Monkey King build from here? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he's already pretty damn decked out. Get the Radiance bottom barracks are under full silver edge, I suppose. Yeah, it could be good against the timber so for that extra armor that he gets from reactive armor. Well, look at Lycan damage. I mean, it's uh, what three, five hundred uh, cleave damage without a howl. Radiance with howl, it's uh, plus extra twenty-five. With bash and the uh, true strike and double strike from Echo Saber. It's good. It hit real hard. It, it looks good. Yeah. But I don't know. It feels like DC just know that they're farming more of the map faster. They'll do that and keep the lanes pressure forward till the Roche does eventually show himself. Had it spawned up a little bit earlier, maybe Infamous could have had a say in the matter, but it was just enough time for for uh, DC rather to be able to keep these lanes pressured forward and create enough of a blanket so that they can get the Roche done. Or did I speak too soon? Running in's gonna be the Ursa. Oh, they shoved him out! And it's gonna be the Crystal Maid who picks up the Aegis. Are you serious? <laughs> he ran in and just shoved Abed out of there. Or Abed shoved himself. I don't know what the hell happened, but they are out. And now they're looking to break out Monkey King all on the other side wall. It's gonna be Benjaz and Ursa looking to shut down Mason and they will get it. Oh, oh, I'm getting chills man. from this game. <laughs> Abed now forced to run out in a way. He has no chance. TP. He has no boots. He has to swap something to his backpack so he can finally hold the TP. Tries to turn around and fight, but he is greatly outnumbered. Oh, no. Wow. Abed used Pike there on Ursa and uh, moved himself out of the Roche pit. Oh, that looked... It, it looked like the Ursa just shoved him right out, but you're right. The Hurricane Pike, I guess he was hoping to deflect the bear out of the pit, but shoving himself out created the most unfortunate situation. And the fight became dramatically split. And now look at this. Infamous on the charge. No one gets an Aegis. Yeah, there should be a cheese. Probably someone ate attack. it during that fight. Wait, the cheese. I have no idea. It was, maybe someone Dyer's denied it. It was just nutty. As they jump in for the high ground themselves, they had been at a serious deficit this game, losing nearly two sets of racks. Dyer's now it's their turn to move into the high ground. Abed dead without a buyback for 40 Dyer's seconds still. will allow Infamous to at least clear out the mid lane set of racks. DC not looking to square up at the moment without having Shadow Fiend ready to go. Mason's yeah, back now, but Infamous are gone. Or are they? Look at this. RP blink. RP blink. Are they trying to go for a fake back? They might. They're, they don't have any sentry wards in the base, so Mac can really cast a good uh, RP or not. They're backing. Time to kill a shrine. Monkey King just hitting down the shrine. 3k gold. He's getting close to level 25. 100%. Boundless strike crit. Yeah, with all the coming. damage, that's gonna be juicy. Oh, he got hit with the dust. He's able to hop up out. Chase was on for DC, but they couldn't quite get it. What a crazy game. Spots him. Ooh, pump fakes the ulti. Perev goes to the high ground, doesn't catch him, but Bulba will. And now the Monkey King ult will come out with a BKB. 
Bulba tries to get forced out from trouble, but still caught inside. But now, maybe the Monkey King a bit overextended. He will lose his own life. Abed sweeps in and will help get the finish. Monkey King going to be out. Buyback is available for him, but otherwise he's gone for 100 seconds. The chase continues here for DC. There's the Crystal Maiden, and there she goes. Also with the buyback available. And now suddenly DC going the other direction, just like that. <laughs> Well, Monkey King shouldn't commit ulti there. Mag blinked in, got uh, backed off from the cogs again. It just keeps getting better. Buyback already forced out for your Crystal Maiden. And I think that's it for DC at the moment. 48 minutes in. Game. Nine. Really anyone's. Two Raxes, two sets of Raxes down on the side of Infamous here. Oh. Infamous have recently been able to take the better of a ridiculous Roche fight and waltz Ooh. themselves down their own mid lane and be able to take out DC's mid set, which gets things pretty even there, but still just the slightest favor for DC. I mean, what do you think, Lacoste, given the items and the situation now? Who do you think well, actually has the, the upper hand? This is the kind of game where... Um one RP changes it, so you can't really tell if he misses an RP, they could lose a game. If he casts like two, three men RP, they'll win it easily. But right now he has a Shadow Blade and the first staff, Blink Dagger, he should be able to get at least two man RP. We'll see what he is going to be blessed with here. DC are slowly crossing their ways past the river once again, but look who could be possibly caught in the mid lane. Jump in from the Ursa. Okay, super hard commitment here from him. Trying to get a hold of Forev will cost him his life potentially. Um, on the backhand side, the Monkey King spots out Mason. Ursa gonna be going down and immediately buys back. Monkey King begins right clicking down Forev. Not your best target on the other front though. A rock will be committed as they chase out for the cores. Both the Ursa and the Wolfman will have to run away. So Nika will be able to get that finish onto the Axe. Now Abed stepping in, interjecting, and being able to easily shrug the rest away. Gets the one takeout. Immediate buyback comes out from Bulba. Sword now under heavy pressure. Going to be taken out. That's the end of the Ursa for this one. He's going to be out for two minutes. And now they look for the next target, and it's going to be the Magnus. He's forced to buy back, and this is all it for DC. They need to get this mid lane if they want the game, and Abed takes to the Tier 3 already. Only missing out on their Warlock, who had already committed their Rock. The Tier 3 will go down. The Shapeshift comes out from Ben Jazz, but at that same moment, Forever moves in. Gets off a nice call and a Requiem, and that's when they unleash the Monkey King ult. Abed looking for the appropriate target is going to be able to quickly take out the Monkey King. He's dropped the gems down. They look for the next target. It's going to be Ben Jazz, and he's out too. Now focus on the Rex here if you're DC, and focus on getting into the playoffs. Infamous buyback with everything they can to try to hold, but it may just be too late. Mega one RP. Yeah, he caught two, and there was no one else to back him up there. He was out of position, and then skewered back Lycan. Lycan tried to focus. Ooh, the guy with a ghost scepter. All the way back, but that is going to do it. It's going to take two games. And DC will be able to finish off Infamous and secure a spot into the playoffs where they will face Team NP in the first round. Both games, Infamous relied so much on that one spell, one RP. When they hit it, uh, they win a team fight. When they don't, they, they lose. It's uh, as simple as that. On the other hand, uh, X again uh, forever on that X uh, with some clutch calls uh, and controlling that Ursa again plus cogs from uh, Bulba you did really some of the best cog jobs that I've seen lately maybe because there's no clockwork a lot but still uh, blocking the entrances a lot of choke point uh, fights in that game and that's when you feel like a clockwork becomes super super valuable he pretty much blocks out the whole entrance of the back area of that fight and that's when the mix-ups really happen there and uh, I don't know maybe a bit too a bit too crazy there at the end I'd have to say for infamous we saw the monkey king get caught out near that roche but even though he had the buyback and then Ursa just throwing himself down that mid lane for forever I think things got just a bit too hectic there I don't know if 
Maybe Infamous had a bit more patience and tried to take the fight inside their own base. It's yeah, really hard to say. Yeah, they didn't have to rush it in the end. I mean, they killed the mid Raxes, and so basically it was two to one in the Raxes score for DC. But uh, they had everything they needed. They just needed to position themselves good, and that's it. I mean, you can't go in with Lycan and focus uh, Clockwork with a four staff and the Ghost Scepter with no Diffusal Blade, and the uh, Warlock just standing there with the Rock being ready. Entertaining nonetheless, and that's uh, what we expect out of our American Dota. Just a couple yeah, well, of 3-2-2s, you know. Yeah, that's uh, kind of a inexperience. I mean, uh, DC is a more experienced team in terms of how long they play together, and uh, just uh, from the players. Uh, Infamous uh, looking uh, strong, though. Can, can't uh, say anything about it. Uh, they, they just need uh, more practice with uh, Tier 1 teams, but uh, seems like a good team overall and uh, maybe one more promising team from NA besides uh, from SA besides uh, SG yeah definitely and uh, a lot of familiar names I'm sure we'll be seeing when they use their appropriate names it's a lot of familiar names like Excel and Matthew and of course Tomato we can't forget Ben Jazz and Sword it was a good running but we will look for more infamous action in the future congratulations once again though to Digital Chaos who will now be facing in a super hype matchup of the first round of the playoffs. I believe our first round of playoff action will be just tomorrow, where Lacoste and I will be back in the casting seat once again. And we'll be having, this is my bold guess, I, I would imagine we'll be starting with the other match first, which means we will be having SG Esports uh, taking on Thunderbirds. And then after that, it will be Digital Chaos versus Team NP. I mean, that's hype, right? That's a hype playoff. Yeah, well, when SG is playing, there's a lot of hype going on. They seem to have a lot of fan base in the, not just South America right now, but uh, I mean, it's their best team from SA, uh, but they got a lot of fans from all over the world since then, since their appearance in Kiev. All right, folks, that's going to close things out for us today. It's been another long day of American Dota action. One three-game stretch, one two-game stretch is all it's going to take. And... Uh, and we're out. So if you want to show some love, hit up my great co-caster here, Lacoste, over at Lacoste Dota on Twitter. I'm Dakota Cox. This is Beyond the Summit. Thanks so much for coming by and hanging out.